afternoon, my name is Scott Mill and I'm the uh, Vice President and General Manager of General Dynamics Land Systems in the UK. Uh, at the show this week, we're, uh, we've been showcasing the Ajax family of vehicles and, and our recent and unveiling of the Ajax Infantry Fighting Vehicle, which is the vehicle right behind me. So this is the missing variant from the Ajax family, the, the seventh variant, now, now unveiled at the show, um, which is providing that infantry fighting vehicle capability. So it's, it benefits from the Ajax family with, with commonality. We're, we're working closely with Lockheed Martin. We've developed a remote turret, which in it frees up space within the vehicle to uh, include the additional dismounts. So we can carry eight dismounts with a, with a crew of three. The, the hull configuration, the, 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 the maturity of the Ajax platform is ported across. So there's no development time associated with delivering this vehicle. We're targeting the export market. Um, there's a great interest in IFVs around the globe and, and we think this can set the NATO standard. I think as the Army uh, works on its, its force design, the, uh, the need for an armoured infantry capability is there. But uh, obviously having one that's fully digitised with an open electronic architecture provides the ability not just to live, give protection to the crews, but also integrate the latest technologies in terms of drone, counter US systems. It, it gives you a much far reaching capability compared to the existing vehicle. Good afternoon to you too. Um, my name is Max Heimann. I'm one of the managing directors of FFG, Flensburger Fahrzeugbaugesellschaft. It's a defense company based in the northern part of Germany. The Condor, it's our newest uh, vehicle in our family. It's based on the um, Leopard 1 chassis, but basically um, that's everything that's left. There's new protection on it. There's a new um, engine, a new power pack in uh, the machine, and then there's a unmanned turret uh, on top of that from uh, EVP from Slovakia. This is a prototype of course, but air defense is, is a big topic and on top of that we were thinking of what is a vehicle that is out there, what is something that's um, uh, fast uh, deliverable. That's why we came up with the idea of using a, a Leopard 1. There are many, many vehicles out there, more than uh, almost 2,000 vehicles still in in, in service, there's a lot of uh, spare parts available and we can uh, transform the vehicle in relatively short time. It's very affordable, of course, and it fulfills a, a service that is in high demand currently. And that's why we thought it's uh, making sense to kind of recycle an existing vehicle, which is something we are very good at. The design is so different because we applied a new protection uh, system to, to the Leopard. That's why on the first side, you don't really recognize that um, the chassis is, is a traditional vehicle. It's a, a specific uh, protection system that we developed that we applied to the vehicle, which is making it so special. It's an unmanned turret from um, uh, EVP, a Tora 30, 30 millimeter um, ammunition, different ammunition that can be applied to it. I think we can be capable of delivering something within 12 months uh, once, we are, once we have orders in place and we, we finish the prototyping. Martin Flores. I'm the general manager of the defense business unit of Archimia. And uh, we, try, we saw here in the DSI our products in the loitering solution in the marine domain, in the aerial domain, and the terrestrial domain. Okay, first of all, we start with the QS LAN 40, which is the tactical system with an endurance of around 25 minutes and 25 kilometers with a warhead of 1.2 kilos anti-tank. The next one is the QS LAN 100 with an autonomy of 60, 70 kilometers and the warhead is four kilos. The concept is the same, it's with a pneumatic launcher. The evolution, the natural evolution is the multi-launcher. So the Grifo, the multi-launcher is prepared to launch five units at the same time for flying in a swarming mode, an autonomous system, and you've got a stockage area in the back with 19. We are agnostic regarding the vehicle. This is an agreement with the Duma Engineering. Uh, when we have signed another agreement with Santa Barbara and so on. We have developed this system also for aircrafts, 
we are working with Airbus to install the multi-launcher system in a C295 aircraft. And also with Airbus helicopters to launch from the NH-90 helicopter. My name is Jussi Järvinen. I'm responsible for protected mobility business area in Patria, meaning the vehicle business that we do. Basically what we now exhibit in, in the ESCI, I mean of course the very special thing was the launch of our new Trax vehicle called Trax. We will have our 6x6 vehicle, also an excellent use day on, related to that as, as UK and Norway joined the program led by Finland, where Latvia, Sweden, Denmark and Germany are all already participating, so now having seven, seven, seven countries, I mean, it's, it's excellent. You need, you need troops to get, get control of some land area. I mean, this is basic, basic use will be as armored personal carrier. Started already six years ago, together with Finnish Defense Forces. I mean, the first, first thing is to replace the articulated vehicles, then actually the biggest potential is with, with replacing the aging MTLB M113 fleets in Europe. I mean basically we are in a vehicle category where there is the clear need for a modern technology. Current technology is basically from, from the 1960s if we think about MTLB and M113. And then compared to articulated vehicles we have clear benefits like the top speed so we have achieved a world, world record 88 kilometers per hour meaning that the vehicle can move long distances on its own as compared to articulated vehicles you need a flatbed and, or, or a truck when you need to move as I said very good tactical operational mobility plus 80 kilometers per hour stomach level as the basics, but then stack level 2 as, as an option for ballistic protection. You can, you can have up to 2 plus 10 crew inside the vehicle. What is now also exceptional is, is that the ground pressure is very low. Payload is 3.5 tons, so basically you can integrate several different kind of weapon systems. For example, our Nimo, the turreted motor, so that has been already planned for the for the tracks integration also. My name is Chua Jing Kiet. I'm head of uh, international business for ST Engineering. ST Engineering is a global defense technology and engineering company headquartered out of Singapore. Uh, we have a long history in the defense business uh, and uh, we are exploring our opportunities in the UK as well as other European markets. What you see behind me is uh, what we are presenting at this show for the first time. Uh, broadly, it is framed as a light recce strike concept. So it's not just about simple capabilities and putting them all together. It's a totally new way of war fighting, which we are looking at the conflicts in Europe and looking at some of the lessons learned and we think that there are opportunities to provide this quick solution for tactical forces. You see a mortar system that's integrated onto a 6x6 vehicle. This mortar system is our company product. It is a GDEMS, Ground Deployed Advanced Mortar System. The good thing about it is that it is quick to deploy, quick to keep, and it is OEM agnostic. I can integrate it on the back of any truck that can carry that kind of load. The strength of this mortar system is that when you open it, it fires, the impact goes into the ground. So there's nothing on the vehicle, or very little on the vehicle. Uh, besides this, what we are presenting, not just as a firing solution, but as an integrated capability, is enabled by the digital architecture that we now provide uh, as an upgrade. So imagine you have a fleet of many old vehicles, you don't want to throw them away, you want to keep using them. We are able to do digital upgrades that give you a digitalized fighting capability. We think that we can take your existing mortars with your existing vehicles, build the integration kit, and suddenly 
you can repurpose your vehicles and your guns and you've got a quick, rapidly deployable shoot and scoot solution. Literally, you stop with your digital firing solution. The, when the mortar deploys, it's already locked on target. Fire off your rounds, you keep it and off you go. 15 seconds down, 15 seconds up. That's how fast it can be. So these are some of the things that we are exploring uh, in the UK with other European customers. Moog is a military motion control company which also has some offerings in turrets and weapon systems. And this particular booth here today is to showcase the RIP turret in each of the configurations required by the British Army. So what we're doing here is showing the versatility of RIP. RIP is designed to host the user's choice of weapons, direct fire or missiles, and the user's choice of sensors. So because this is a booth focused on the British Army's requirements, we're showing directly behind me here our current understanding of the Army's specialist counter US requirement, which is the Northrop Grumman 30 by 173 cannon. Um, we're also showing on the turret a 7.62 machine gun should there be a need for close protection. Over on the turret on the other side of the booth, we're showing the same turret, but with different weapons fitted to it. In this case, the Brimstone missile, which the Army are looking to use in a close combat overwatch, force overwatch configuration. RIP is designed to go on pretty much any wheeled or tracked vehicle, so it does give the armed force users their choice of light forces or heavy forces uh, roles for any of the RIP configurations. The reason is that there is no penetration of any RIP equipment inside the hull, so effectively and simply all that is needed is the right sized hole on the roof, and then we provide everything else, including the integration if needed.